Good evening. Good evening. Can y'all hear me good? Good. All right. If you have your Bibles, follow along with me. I am going to have some verses on the screen. Uh, look at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm going to tell you a little bit about a story there that's pretty interesting. Jesus performs a miracle, uh, but this miracle is a little bit different than others. See, Jesus performs a miracle, but he does something slightly different because in this case, he's not helping anyone. He's not making the blind see. He's not letting someone be able to uh, walk again. He's not raising anyone from the dead. Instead, he's actually doing something kind of destructive. If you're familiar with the story in Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse 12, this is the story of Jesus cursing the fig tree. Jesus was going on a journey towards Jerusalem. As he was going to Jerusalem, he gets hungry. And he does what any one of us would do. He starts looking for food. So out in the distance, he sees a fig tree. This fig tree has leaves on it. And so Jesus starts heading towards the fig tree. Why? Because he's hungry. He wants something to eat. Just like if you're walking in the woods and you start getting hungry and you see an apple tree, what are you going to do? You're going to walk over to that tree, get you an apple to eat. So Jesus goes to the fig tree and when he gets there, he realizes there's no fruit, only leaves. There's nothing but leaves, not a fig to be found. Jesus is upset. Jesus is kind of a little bit angry at this moment. And so he curses the tree. And he does this for a purpose that we're not going to get into tonight. But he curses this tree and it withers and dies. Now, I always had a little bit of a hard time with this story because I was kind of confused of why Jesus see, you know, he'd see this fig tree and get upset at the tree because it didn't have any fruit. I, I just was always a little confused and I'll explain why. You see, Jesus was deceived by the leaves. And that's the first thing I want you to see tonight is that leaves can deceive. If you look at Mark 11 verse 13, it says, In seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. Did you catch it? It was not the season for figs. So why would Jesus get upset at the fig tree if it wasn't even the season for figs? It's because of the leaves. See, I, I learned a little bit about fig trees because this bothered me a little bit. And apparently, when fig trees would grow their leaves, they would begin to also grow fruit. And even though it wasn't the season for figs, even though that the fruit wouldn't be ripe, oftentimes you could find maybe some type of green fruit that you could eat. You could still find something there that would give you the energy that you needed. That's why Jesus was upset. He was deceived by the appearances. It had the appearance like it would be producing fruit, but he didn't. How many of you are familiar with the name of Frank Abagnale Jr.? Frank Abagnale Jr.? Oh, yeah, Hunter Kinnaman. There we go. You might be thinking, does that name sound familiar? And it probably does if you saw this movie, Catch Me If You Can, starring Tom Hanks and Leo DiCaprio. But this was a fascinating movie based on a true story, based on a real person. Frank Abagnale Jr. was fascinating because at the age of 15, he started scamming people, tricking people, and stealing money. He assumed about eight different identities. He would pretend to be a pilot, a doctor, or lawyer so that he could find a way to get rich. And during this time, I think he cashed something like $2.5 million in fraudulent checks. He was living it up. Now, what was even crazier, not only would he pretend to be like a pilot, a doctor, or a lawyer, but he would actually try to take these jobs. Like he would get in the cockpit of an airplane. He was, actually took a job at like a hospital. He would work for a law office. Like, this is crazy. And it was so crazy, you're thinking, well, how was he able to do this? Because he kind of looked the part. In fact, one of the more amusing stories about Frank is this. Um, he started noticing that airports and car rental places, they had a place where they would go take some of their money and they would put it in a bag and they would put it in this drop box. So Frank had a brilliant idea. He says, I know how I can get this money. 
And so he goes to a costume store and gets a security guard costume and he makes a sign for the box that says, out of service, leave money with security guard. How does a box go out of service? See, he was a brilliant guy. And you think about, well, how is he able to trick so many people? It's because he looked the part. If you go to an airport and you see someone in a pilot's uniform, what do you think they are? Exactly. I wonder how many of us are a lot like the fig tree and a lot like Frank. I wonder how many of us, we appear to be like a Christian. We might even act like one when we're around other Christians. But if you looked at our lives, you wouldn't find any fruit. Appearances can be deceiving. You might even have a reputation with other Christians. People might look at you and they say, oh, I know that person. That person's a Christian. I saw them at Maywood Christian Camp. I saw them at church. They go there on Sunday mornings. Maybe they're at Bible class sometimes. And you even build up a reputation. What's interesting is in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus, he talks to the church at Sardis. And he says, I know your reputation. You have a reputation for being alive, but I know better. You're dead. You see, your reputation doesn't necessarily reflect your reality. Just because people think that you might be a Christian doesn't mean that you are one. Just because you appear to be one sometimes does not mean that you are one. You see, leaves can deceive, but fruit always reveals. Fruit will reveal. If you look at Matthew chapter 7, Jesus on the, the Sermon on the Mount there, he says this beginning in verse 15. He says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Notice what he says here in verse 16 and 20. You will recognize them by their fruits. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Jesus is saying, just take a good look at their life and you can really tell if they are a Christian or if they're not. If they're producing the fruit of the Spirit or are they producing the fruit of the world? I'm not a botanist. Like if that means I, I don't know a lot about plants and trees, okay? If you were to ask me what any of these trees were, I couldn't tell you. I feel a lot like this guy right here. You can tell it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Some of you have probably seen that video, Nature, on YouTube. But anyway, I don't know anything about plants, but you know what I'm really good at? I'm really good at being able to tell what type of fruit tree that is. So if I were to see a tree and it was a fruit tree, I would be able to distinguish what type of fruit tree it is. You know why? The fruit on the tree. I can tell an apple tree when I see an apple. I know an orange tree when I see an orange. I know a lemon tree when I see a lemon. I'm really good at recognizing fruits and you are too. People can look at you and your life and they can really tell if they spend enough time with you if you are what you really say you are. Sometimes we might try to put on a good appearance and we're just really deceiving ourselves. We won't be able to deceive the Lord. God knows what fruit we're producing in our life. If we're asking ourselves tonight, what fruit am I producing? Am I producing the fruit of the Spirit or am I producing the fruit of the world? Am I living like Christ or am I living like everyone else? Am I being who God would have me to be, being like Him, or am I just living in sin? Truth will come out. See, if um, you ever work at a... How many of y'all know how to tell a counterfeit bill? Raise your hand if you know how to tell a counterfeit bill. All right. If you've never figured out how to tell a counterfeit bill, basically if money is real or fake, they'll teach you how to do it if you ever work at a bank or any retail store. Maybe you'll even pick it up in life because it's just kind of an interesting thing to know. Uh, but what they'll do is they'll get... Well, they won't tell you all the things that's wrong all the ways that it could be fake, what they'll do is they'll get a real $100 bill, $50 bill, whatever denomination it is, and they'll show it to you. And they'll say, 
This is what you look at. This is how you know what's real. If you want to make sure that you are producing the fruit of the Spirit, what you need to do is to compare your life to Jesus. Am I loving like Jesus? Am I being kind like Jesus? Am I being good? Am I being faithful? Do I have that self-control that He does? Keep in mind, we've been talking about in our adult, uh, not adult class, our uh, older class or 15 and up class, we've been talking about that it's not a buffet line. You don't get to pick and choose. You can't say, well, today I'm going to practice self-control. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm not going to be mean to anyone. But I tell you what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to love them. It doesn't work that way. You either take all of it or none of it. You're either living like God or you're living like the world. It's not a pick or it's pick one or the other. You've got to choose him and fully submit to him. Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, says you need to examine yourself. You need to spend some time looking at your fruit and make sure the fruit that you're bearing is really what it should be. Compare your fruit to the fruit. And if you see something in your life that needs to change, make that change. If you find out that you have some bad fruit, what you need to do is dig it up. That's the verse right there. It talks about the works of the flesh are evident. I left that out. Thank you. All right. The only way to deal with bad fruit is to dig up the root. I'm not a, uh, I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, I'm not very good at yard work. I can cut grass. I know how to work a lawnmower. I can actually weed eat. But when it comes to like, I don't know, nice manicured lawns, that's not me. I'm not going to win any awards in our little neighborhood. Um, in fact, if you kind of look by our house, you're probably like, wow, he probably needs to cut the grass. Probably needs to do a better job. But uh, when me and my wife, we moved into the house that we're living in now, I was like, well, you know, it looks nice on the outside. It has two nice little bushes in the front of the house there. And then I realized later, those aren't bushes their trees. They started growing. They got really big and they started blocking kind of the front of our house. It got really ugly, got pretty disgusting real quick. And it just, it was an eyesore. And I like, they were banging on the windows when like it was storm and everything. It was terrible. So this last year I decided, you know what I need to do? I need to take care of those trees. So uh, I don't have a chainsaw. Apparently I need to get one, but I went out with a handsaw and there are trees like this big around, mind you, right in front of my house. And so I just like go to work. And I'm cutting down these trees. I finally get them. I take them down. I throw them off into the woods. And I'm like, oh, I finally dealt with this tree problem until this year. You see, some of you have done yard work before. Some of you know what I did wrong. You see, I might have cut down the tree, but I didn't deal with the root of the problem. Literally, the stump was still there. The root was still there. And so guess what happened this summer? Even though it's not a full-grown tree, I got the tree growing back, both of them. And so I'm having to... Levi knows. They look like bushes. They look like, they look like bushes right now, so I have to cut them down again. Now here's the problem. I'm going to keep fighting these trees. I'm going to have to keep cutting these trees down until I dig up the root. Some of us, we, we struggle with sin and we keep going to it and we're like, why do I keep falling back into sin? Why do I keep doing this? Well, here's why. You're never dealing with the root of the issue. A lot of us sometimes are not willing to dig up the sin out of our lives. We're not willing to get rid of it. And so we keep just wrestling with it. We, we're okay for a time, for a season, and then it comes back. Some of you have friends in your life and you know. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad company corrupts good morals. You know that those are not the friends you need in your life, but you won't get rid of that relationship. And so time and time again, they are just pulling you away. Some of us have sin in our life and we're not willing to deal with it. There's maybe one sin, some pet sins, and we're just not willing to get rid of them and we just keep going back to them. And we have moments like this at Maywood where we say, this is it, I'm finally going to beat it, I'm finally going to get rid of it. But we never do anything really about it. And then we, when we leave, we just fall back into it. Until you deal with the root of the issue, you're going to keep having this problem. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, this is what Paul says. He's talking about the differences of the, the flesh and the spirits there. And this is what he says. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Basically says... Until you kill it, you will never be rid of it. 
until you dig up the sin in your life and get rid of it, you're going to continue to struggle with it. What it means to be a Christian, what it means to produce the fruit in your life is that you're living for Him on a continual basis. It's not this, I'm going to do this now, but I'm going to come back later to this. You've got to be willing to die to that old way. And if you continue to live the way you did before you became a Christian, then you're going to continue to be the same person you were then. You've got to die to that sin. I was reminded... The other night, as Noah was talking, uh, he was talking about an opportunity where he was faced with a, a very real, terrible situation. Somebody was dying and he had the opportunity to help. It actually reminded me of something that happened here at Maywood Christian Camp on a night much like tonight because we were at dinner in the old mess hall and I'm sitting there and right across from me was Andrew Kingsley. And Andrew Kingsley, he was eating, and I think we had hamburger steak, just like we did tonight. We had some corn, maybe something else, and some mashed potatoes. And we're all sitting there talking, we're having a good time, and, and then Andrew gets real quiet. Nobody really notices, because you think about it, like you're in there, you're just in your own little world, eating the hamburger steak, because it's good, and you're like, okay, are they gonna call seconds? And all of a sudden, like, Andrew starts turning red, not only he starts turning red, he starts getting darker, and it's kind of like getting to the point where it's purple, and he stands up. And then he starts doing this. What does that mean? He's choking. That's the universal sign for choking. The other youth minister, John Brian O'Connor, was actually sitting beside him, and so he sees what's going on too. He rips off the backpack, and then I immediately start grabbing Andrew and performing the Heimlich maneuver. The reason I tell you that story it's because some of you are probably struggling with something in your life. Some of you are probably wrestling with sin and you are here surrounding yourselves with other Christians this week. But you continue to stay in that struggle and you're not letting anyone know. We as your brothers and sisters in Christ are here to encourage you, to help you. And if you have a need, that's what we're here for. We want to help you. We want to bear one another's burdens. We want to help encourage you so that one day that we can be with our Father in heaven. But if you never tell us how we can help you, we'll never know. If Andrew never knew how to tell us that he was choking, we would all have been guessing what was happening. What are you struggling with tonight? Maybe you're just appearing to look like a Christian on the outside, but God knows. Maybe you are producing fruit, but it's not the fruit that God would want you to produce. Your fruit will reveal who you really are. If I could um, reiterate something that Dennis said, if I could get all the adults to stand up for me. Go ahead, stand up. All the adults, stand up, look. There are two reasons why these adults are here. They love God and they love you. I don't know your struggle. We don't know how we can help. But if you have a need tonight, come tell us. We're here to help you. If you have any need, please come forward as we stand, as we sing.